6, 2011, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, first issue um, is election of officers. We're already at that time again, huh? Well, we were back in January. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have no idea if any, do we have any nominations? Nobody's expressed any interest. Um, As yet. Dave was, Dave Johnson was the current chair. He's not here tonight. Um, was his term over? He can run for another term. He can run for another term. Can we table this issue to next time until he's? Um, it's preferable if we get it, we get, we get it slate. Since we're already more than half of the year. We may not have another meeting, so. Okay. Um, he didn't, you know, I mean, you could. Nominate. Well, since he's not here, we need another chair. You could nominate him. And I would argue because he's not here, we should <laughs> nominate him. And if he, if he decides. He only he can serve two consecutive terms, right, as chair? I think it's two, yes. So he's only. Three terms as a board member and two terms as a chair. Chair. All right. Do I hear a nomination or renominate David? I'll renominate David. All right. All in favor? Oh, actually, any second? For I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? All right, David's chair. And then we need what? A secretary or a co chair? Yeah, secretary. They call it secretary, yeah. Okay. Can I have a volunteer for secretary slash co chair? Mr. Thibodeau? I will serve as co-chair. Okay, great. Uh, I second, uh, I, I nominate John. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay. John Thibodeau is the co-chair. Um, to approve the minutes of the uh, December 28th, 2011, well, oh, actually backing up our officers, that's all we need are the two, correct? Excuse me? We just need the two officers. That's, that's sufficient, right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Moving on to the next issue of business, the minutes of the December 28th, 2011 um, board meeting. I don't believe we have a quorum for that, right? No. Okay. So that'll be tabled to next business, the next uh, meeting. Old business, is there any old business left? No. Okay. New business, to hear an administrative appeal of the code enforcement officer's decision to not require a slight plan review for gravel access way that tra traverses over lot 9 of map U26 and into lot 6-5 of the map U26 for, the, for not requiring site review for ag agricultural use of lot 6-5 of map U26 and for not taking enforcement action for alleged resource protection district violations on the above reference lots. Okay, just point of... Uh the Roberts rules. It, 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 did David ask you to, to, to step up? Yes, to the plate So we can do that even though we have a new. Correct. Tonight, I should note for the record that Mr. Johnson asked that I serve as chair of the board tonight, and I'm acting in that capacity this evening. Thank you. Is my name up there? It's Len Galino. All right. And the application for ordinance and interpretation is by the appellant, Joyce Beecher. Um, would the applicant please approach the podium and uh, present their case, please? Bruce McLaughlin, attorney representing Joyce Beecher, applicant and resident of 4 Windmill Lane. <clears throat> I'm wondering if it would be helpful to have this up for the... Yes, board. please do. Sure. This is a uh, site map or site plan of some sort that was prepared for the proposed blueberry farm operation. Uh, this big red circle up here. But it was prepared in, in uh, the uh, applicant's um, submission to the planning board for uh, resource protection permit 
review of a small piece of the farm operation that was going to sit within the resource protection zone. This doesn't exactly show the resource protection zone boundary, but it's something along this line here. The setback. Uh, this, right. Right. The overlay. The overlay. Right. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's something like this. This lot right here, lot 8, I believe, is Mrs. Beecher's lot. This lot over here is lot 9, <coughs> owned by Rita Preston. The gravel access way in dispute is, is right here, pretty much adjacent to the Beecher lot. This is the what I think is referred to as lot 6-5, owned by the Bothells. Well, so not exactly, but no, it's exactly. all Bothell land. It's all Bothell land. It's 6 and then 6-5, is that right? Right. Okay. <clears throat> I think the, the facts relating to this appeal are, are pretty much not in dispute. I'm not anticipating that there's going to be any need for facts presentation tonight beyond the submissions that have been submitted and, mm -hmm. and the materials that are in the code enforcement officer's file. Um, <coughs> Mr. Salve uh, is, I believe, the representative of the owner of the Bothells who own the property. Mr. Salve uh, is currently not pursuing the plan, as I understand it, to put the blueberry um, plants within the resource protection district. That application has not been pursued with the planning board. Uh, they are, uh, I understand, planning to put plantings over here all within the, resource, the residential R RA district. Um, there is some plan to use this access way, as I understand it, either for farm vehicles and or pedestrian access for the pick your own. <clears throat> In 2010, the code enforcement officer determined that the access road violated the ordinance because it's located in the resource protection district and there was no permit ever issued for it. And at that time, he directed the owners to, well, he directed Mr. Salve to revegetate that strip of land and remove the access way. In February of 2011, um, the code enforcement officer reversed that decision, finding that the road is permitted as a necessary accessory to the proposed agricultural use in this lot. Well, it's not proposed, but <coughs> Okay, I'm sorry. The, the ongoing or the existing agricultural use. <clears throat> we claim that this was an error and that the road cannot be used without a resource protection permit and without site plan review. When, um, when Mr. Salve applied for the resource protection permit for the, the then proposed use within the resource protection zone in lot six, we asked the code enforcement officer to also refer to the planning board for site plan review all of the agricultural use, including within the uh, residential district. Say that last point again. We also asked the code enforcement officer to we, your client, to refer to the planning board the use within the residential district for site plan review and for the use of the access road for site plan review. Those requests were denied and we're claiming that that was our. I'll address the road first. The road is both within the resource protection district, the overlay, and within the residential district. So it needs to comply with both districts. Um, there is no accessory use listed in resource protection district as a permitted use. So I would argue that the, the, the position that it's a, an allowed accessory use 
accessory to the primary use of agriculture only fits as an argument within the residential district. There is no accessory use listed within the resource protection district. So, so it's error for that reason alone. Even if you look within the, res the residential district, if it's an accessory use to agriculture, it's what's called an agricultural related use, which is defined in the definition section as a use that is incidental and subordinate to the primary use of agriculture that complements the primary agricultural use and which will help sustain the primary use of agriculture on the property. Now, that's consistent with the general concept that an accessory use is accessory to a primary use on the same lot, especially within the same district. And I would cite you to Town of Union v. Strong, 681 A. 2nd, 14, the general principle that accessory uses or, or structures are accessory to the permitted use on the same lot. Is that in your letter, that site? Uh, it, is, it is not. 681 <clears throat> A. 2nd, 14. Do you have an extra copy of the case for us? I don't. I'm sorry. I could submit it to and you. What's the name of the case? It's Town of Union v. Strong. And what's the proposition expressed by that decision? That the concept of an accessory use as allowed to go along with the permitted use only applies when the uses are on the same lot. In this case... And that holding in that case says that if you have... What's the relationship between the applicant and this owner of the property on which the road goes over? Well, that's a very good question. Um, the road that it goes, the, the lot that it goes over is lot nine. It's owned by Rita Preston. My understanding is she's some relation to the Bothells. But it is a totally um, separately titled piece of property. And I'm not, I, I, I'm sure it'll be clarified, but I'm not sure that, that uh, there's clear um, right title of use in, in connection with and you're, prop you're telling us that STRONG stands for the proposition that the accessory use has to be on the property, on the one parcel on which the, the primary use is being performed? I don't want to overstate yeah. the holding of that case. I don't, think, I don't think the holding of that case would necessarily be that strong. But it does um, state the general principle that that's what accessory uses are. And it stands to reason. If, if an accessory use is going to follow along with a primary permitted use, the, the applicable requirements of the ordinance are going to change with lots, with districts. Here we don't even have the same district, let alone the same lot, or the same owner. <clears throat> In addition, the residential district has a side setback requirement of 30 feet, which I would argue would apply here. And this is the roads clearly within 30 feet of Mrs. Peach's boundary. So <clears throat> it's, it's error to conclude that it's a necessary accessory use permitted under Resource Protection District because there is no permitted use uh, um, defined as accessory. What is the th where, what's the site for the 30-foot setback requirement? Do you have that? That is on page 61 of the ordinance. Yeah, it's in the... Uh, space and bulk standards section for the residential district. And but isn't that for the primary structure? Or the structure? It says yes. all use is otherwise specified. Well, that's been common practice. I'm sorry? I said it's been common practice that, that those are uh, for structures. For structures. Uh, the only time we have setbacks for, for driveways or parking lots uh, or anything like that is when, when we're falling into a commercial 
uh, situation where the ordinance is clear that it lists setbacks for Pacific, Pacific things like a parking lot uh, in a particular district. Uh, it might it might actually clarify it in the definition. Um, but that's not my primary argument. My primary argument is you don't even get there because okay. it's in the resource protection district as, as, as well as the residential and it's not allowed as an accessory use. Yeah. The only thing I think you could pin, pinhole it into in the resource protection district is, is an agricultural use because it's planned to be used for access to um, the pick your own operation. And an agricultural use in the resource protection district requires uh, resource protection permit with the planning board. Now, is there any dispute that the road is, or the pathway, the access way, is a pre-existing pathway? Uh, we would dispute that, and I would uh, I would suggest that that's not something that the board should get into tonight because it was not a determination that was made by the code enforcement officer. Um, in fact, I think in one of the code enforcement officers letters to me, he specifically says there may have been some past use that suggests grandfathering, but the town hasn't, hasn't verified that. So there's, I don't think there's any determination that the code enforcement officer made in that regard that would be before the, court, before the board for review. Um, I, I, I would note uh, table 19.6.9. Uh, as you noted, uh, agricultural use does appear to require a resource protection permit, although it also notes that existing uses are exempted. Okay, and if, if we get into the, the facts of past use, I guess I would want to reserve the right to have um, my client come and testify on those points. But I would also refer to um, attorney I hope I don't mess it up, Taranda. Attorney Taranda's letter of yesterday, uh, she refers to a past use of timber harvesting, which is not agricultural. Timber harvesting and agricultural are mutually exclusive under the definition section. So if, even if there was a past use for timber harvesting, which we would dispute, it doesn't um, get you any continuing use of that grandfather use. It's a, it's a change in use. So you, you have to have a permit for the road, use of the road for agricultural purposes under the Resource Protection District and under the uh, Residential District, I would argue that accessory use doesn't work because of the business with different lots and different districts and different ownership. So for those reasons, we request that the board find error with respect to the determination on the road, both as a permitted use and not requiring uh, planning board review and site plan review. With respect to site plan review, we get into some arcane interpretation of words of the ordinance, but I'm gonna, I, uh, my view is that absolutely plain, clear language reading of the words in the ordinance with no ambiguities, no conflicts, absolutely require site plan review for any non-residential use. And before we even get into the definition of non-residential, the, <coughs> the purpose language and the operative requirements language in the site plan review section are perfectly clear. And I'm at page 220, section 19, Nine one. Two twenty. In in my book. Nineteen nine one is the purpose section. Nineteen nine two is the applicability section. And what's the language you're relying upon? In in the purpose section, the 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 main language is that the purpose is to assure, and I'm three downs line, three lines down assuring that non-residential, multiplex residential, elder care, and similar facilities are designed and developed in a manner that ensure traffic safety and access and a number of other typical site plan concerns. So it's clear 
from the purpose that it's meant to cover any non-residential use. That purpose is carried through into the applicability section, which says that any of the following activities require site plan review, and those activities include, number two, any non-residential expansion or change in use. This is clearly a non-residential change in use from apparently timber harvesting in the past, if that was, was done, to agriculture. Or the more recent application was to have it as a residential use, which now, is never now, pursued. Now, you touched on earlier the uh, phrase agriculture-related use in relation to the road itself. Uh, perhaps we could turn to what you view the uses are what uh, classifications the uses would fall into for the blueberry bushes and the pick your own uh, harvesting operation. Would you categorize both of them as agricultural use or would one qualify as an agricultural use with the pick your own then falling into an agriculture related use? Um, well, that's a good question, I suppose. Um, I think agriculture is, is directly to page three, nineteen one three. Agriculture, agriculture related, is, is page three. Or, Correct. And agriculture is on page two. Correct. And so that agriculture includes harvesting, selling, managing. I would argue that that using farm vehicles to get across lot nine to lot six five is part of harvesting um, now what managing. about uh, pick your own operation again I would say that that's part of harvesting and selling would that fall into an agriculture related use and if not why not well that's a use that is incidental and subordinate to the primary use so I'm not sure exactly what that might be, maybe the road would be incidental and subordinate to the primary use of, of the uh, operation on six. But either way, it's a non-residential use. Did I answer your question? Uh, it sounds like your position would be that both pick your own and the planting of blueberry bushes would both fall into the category of an agricultural use? I believe so. Right. And to the extent that any particular activity is incidental and subordinate rather than primary, it would be agriculture related. <clears throat> and so we've got the purpose and the applicability clearly encompassing any non-residential use and then under B on page 221 is a very specific exclusive list of exceptions. And under 3, B3, agricultural buildings, but not agricultural uses, are accepted from site plan review under certain conditions. Now, if if agriculture isn't non-residential, I'm not sure why you would have an exception for agricultural buildings. But the, the determination by the code enforcement officer and the argument made by, by the, um, the um, Bothell's salve is that non-residential doesn't include agriculture because under the residential district, Agriculture is listed as a resource-related use, not a non-residential use. And that doesn't work because those are just, I think if you look in the context of the whole ordinance, and I'm now on page 58, the list of permitted uses in the residential A district. And this is the same setup we'll see in all of the districts. It lists permitted uses and categorizes those 
as resource related, residential, non-residential, accessory. Now, those are not mutually exclusive categories. Um, <clears throat> agricultural is, just in the common plain meaning of the words, is clearly non-residential. Well, it's also resource related. If you look at the first section under resource related, subsection A, any use permitted in resource, you know, lists all the resource protection districts. Okay, so any, anything allowed in the resource protection districts is considered resource related for purposes of this categorization. Well, if you look in table 1969 for, um, for resource protection uses, there's a whole variety of uses, including home occupation, which is clearly a residential use. Would you argue home occupation is a resource-related use? Well, it is by definition here. Well, no, no, no. I mean, it's, if, if it's not my definition of resource-related, you're making my point, which is that this is just a category. It's just a convenient way of listing different uses. I'm, I'm losing you here because yeah. 19, <clears throat> 1969, the table at item 28 indicates, as I understand it, that agriculture is exempted. Right, from the application of the resource protection, or it's allowed within the resource protection zone. Um, where are we looking? Um, it's on page one. One thirty-four. One thirty-four. Top item twenty-eight. With a resource protection permit. And it sounds like your position is basically, uh, according to the plain language of uh, 1961 with the definition of residence uh, A district, uh, the RA district, it appears to contemplate that every item listed in 1969 qualifies as a resource-related use by virtue of the heading. Is that your position? Right. So, for example, uh, perhaps it would have been more accurately written with 1A uh, beginning, instead of any use permitted, it would have been any resource-related use permitted in resource protection. No, I don't think so, because first of all, resource-related as a term is not defined in the ordinance, nor is it used anywhere in the ordinance other than as a category within these districts. Okay, so I'm, uh, maybe my computer has, is, is not perfect, but I did a a uh, word search of the whole ordinance looking for resource related. The only place it appears is as a category of permitted uses in each of the districts. So it doesn't have a functional meaning for any other purpose in the ordinance other than serving as a convenient category to dump things in within each district. So, so to say something is resource related in a definitional way doesn't have any particular meaning for the ordinance. And if you look at the district, the, the residential district, <clears throat> page 63, section F at the bottom, is where the residential aid district talks about the different uses that require site plan review. So, again, my view of the ordinance here is to figure out what's in the site plan review, you first look at the, the site plan review section, and that gives you the general scope. But then you look in each individual district to see if there's something else that isn't within the general scope. Doesn't it have to, in order to require site plan review, it's got to be one of the things listed right at the top of page 64, which is 
it has to be in section, it has to be multiplex housing or items under two, three, or four, right? Uh, well, but when you get to four, it says any other use or activity listed in 1992, which gets it back to site plan review general scope. So you're just relying on the general scope statement? Right. And, and they're relying on one through three as saying that those are exclusive. Well, no, they're not, because clearly four takes you back to the general scope. So the, the scheme is that 19.9.2 gives you the general scope of site plan review, any non-residential use, except for specific items. But 19.9.2... Then each district gives you another possibility of, of options in addition to what's stated in the general scope. But the purpose section is 1991, right? Right. And page, item 4 on page 64 is any other use or activity listed in 1992. And agriculture is not listed in 1992, is it? No, but any non-residential change in use is. So it comes down to whether or not agriculture falls under residential or not. Falls under non-residential. Yeah, and, that's, and their argument is that it's residential, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, more accurately, their argument would be that there are potentially three categories. One is resource-related use, another is residential, and another is non-residential. Uh, perhaps you could turn to your argument about section 981, uh, subsection 1, uh, the amendment in June, t of June 10th, 2010. Uh, I'm sorry, where are we? Page 176, section 1981, uh, yes. entitled Buffering of Non-Residential Uses. Right. That's an example of non-residential being used in its common sense dictionary definition as anything that's not residential. And it says, the required side and rear yards of non-residential uses except agriculture. So your argument would be that sentence right there contemplates that agriculture is a non-residential use, but it's accepted from this restriction exactly. in this section. Exactly. And by virtue of this sentence, we should incorporate uh, agriculture into the category non-residential uses throughout the ordinance. You should apply the plain meaning of the term non-residential because that's a good example of how it's used that way. And the categorization within the districts, which are clearly not mutually exclusive, resource related and non-residential, does not give you the alternative meaning. So now it, um, my understanding is the blueberry bushes were planted in May 2010. Is that disputed at all? I, I don't know. Uh, because this amendment went into effect in June, um, how that will play out, I can't speak to right now, except uh, the, the contemplating agriculture as a non-residential use, using this argument, one could argue, came into effect in June 2010. What section are you looking at there? Uh, the exact same subsection, 1981, um, subsection <coughs> 1, which... What page is that? 176. Well, that, I mean, it doesn't preclude the rest of the application of all of this. I mean, it's, it's an example of what the authors of the ordinance understood non-residential to mean, regardless of when it was inserted into the ordinance. It's not an operative provision that's being applied to this case. It's just a, an interpretive aid. <clears throat> so to sum up on the site plan review, I think um, this is 
Attorney Toronto is going to argue as well that you need to have something that's requiring a permit in order to get a site plan review. And because in the resource protection district, I mean in the um, residential district, agriculture is permitted without going to get a permit. Well, then you don't have to also get a site plan review. Or, or but that that doesn't um, necessarily follow because site plan review is just another set of requirements and procedures that can apply to any use independently and separately from permitting review and procedures, just like, just like um, performance standards. Uh, if you look under the, the residential district, even though something's permitted, it's still got to comply with the performance standards. So if it's permitted, it's got to comply with the performance standards, and if site plan review says it's required, you've got to go through that process. Now, uh, under your argument, say a farmer has been in, res in uh, residence district A has been growing strawberries for the last 10 years. Uh, they decide they want to switch to planting carrots instead. Uh, would that be a change in use requiring site plan review? No, those are both agricultural uses. So is the fact that it went from timber harvesting to blueberry planting, that's your definite, that's a, that's a change in use from your perspective? Agriculture is defined, I believe, to specifically exclude timber harvesting on page three right at the top of the page. Mm -hmm. So uh, what about an expansion? Say someone was previously planting, said, strawberries, and now has decided they're going to plant strawberries on a further portion of the lot, um, well away from any setbacks. Would that require a site plan review? Possibly, but that's not the case that's before you. Anything else? Uh, I think that pretty well covers it. And I don't know if the way you have this set up, whether I have an opportunity to rebut any. Yes. Okay. We'll give you a chance to rebut. Uh, and before you sit down, any other questions for this for the applicant at this point? And so, if you just summarize the points you want us to consider, what what are the your main points? Because you've raised a lot of points in your I have, huh? application. I want to know from you, what are the ones that you think have teeth to them that you really want us to consider? That the access road, that, that the code enforcement officer erred in determining that the access road is a necessary accessory use to the agricultural use. For, uh, do you want me to go through those reasons? No, yeah. no. Okay. And that the um, agricultural use in the residential district, that determination that that use does not require a site plan review. Okay. Those are the, those are the, the two main issues. points. Yeah, okay. Very good. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Is anyone else going to speak on behalf of the applicant today, just yourself? Uh, I, I would um, like to reserve the possibility if we get into more facts that need to be clarified, but I don't anticipate that. Is that an appropriate way um, to proceed? I, I, you'll have a chance for rebuttal, so whatever rebuttal you need, you'll have. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Smith. I'd like to uh, make a few points. Sure. Do you want me to be available for comment? No, you're all set. Um, first off, the, the, the access, the road that was there is, not, is no longer a road. Um, I can tell you two reasons, one of the two reasons why I took the stand that I did was because there's nothing in the audience that precludes the applicant from using a tractor to get to the blueberry fields through the woods. Um, and doing, taking out the gravel that gives it a hard packed surface to run a tractor on because it's already in and been there 10 years seemed to me Protect the, would protect the resource to a greater practical extent than running a tractor through the woods and digging up the the uh, digging up the, gra the, the the natural buffer. So from that perspective, I I, I put some limitations on the use of the, that cleared area through the woods 
you can call it whatever you want. You can call it a road if you want, but it's not a road because it's only going to be used for a tractor and to walk through the woods uh, to get to the blueberries. So it's very limited in, 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 in exactly what it is. Usually Sorry, some... don't they also have to go across that road for the uh, pick your own? Excuse me? Customers have to go across for the pick your own aspect of the operation, don't they? They would walk up, but they don't have to. They wouldn't have to utilize any of it. The the plan is they're not going to be able to drive up that. No. They'll hit park on what is it, 77? They'd park anywhere that that, that that the town doesn't have posted. It could be on windmill. It could be in the field. Uh, it could be any place because. Um, my next point is that, th that this town is very farm and fish industry oriented and had, the history there's never been anybody that's taken a review to the plan board for site plan um, because of the fact that, 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 that those are industries that, that, that makes up the fabric of the, of the town itself. Um, as a matter of fact, some of these changes here, such as the resource related um, addition, was to make it more, um, make it easier on farmers to find other ways to, to, to exist. And a resource related hasn't got to do with a gravel drive so much or at all that would be accessory to that. It's got to do with, with, with maybe renting some space as he did it over to Jordan's farm with the little, the well, which is prepared food from, from not only Jordan farm, but maybe from, from lobsters out in the bay. Anything that's, 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 that's resource related that will help support the farm. So that's what, all, that's what a resource related um, addition to the audience was try, tried to capture. Um, to get back to the road, the, the sheer length of time that, that what that gravel has been in there, um, with the proper pr approval for the for the um, entrance permit from the public works, I was here when that all t transpired. But I don't think anybody thought of of, of the setback from the from the resource. Um, I don't even recall the road going in, but that doesn't make it right or wrong. But usually when something 10, 10 years down the road is discovered, it's not necessarily, even though it may, maybe, maybe it should be elevated to, to the same as, as yesterday. But commonly, you try to work with them um, to make it a better situation, but not necessarily remove move entirely if they've got some... I don't know what I'm trying to say here. If they've got some vested rights because of the length of time it's gone by. So, so that's what, why I, 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 rather than, than take, completely take the gravel out and, and let the tractors dig up the, the, uh, the natural duff, uh, it, the resource would be protected better if, if they could leave it and let they even agree to go as far as letting the grass grow completely across rather than the eight feet. So uh, to me, that's already that's going to bring it back to where it was pretty much anyways with a, with a good surface. So that was my thinking on that. Um, but, but there is no possibility to get that road in. If you consider a road, there really isn't a possibility to, to have site plan review for that at all anyways. But, but did you say that, that? Because it's not allowed. Did you say that the trackers, that it would be used by tractors as an access point on occasion? Yes. As well as a trail, foot, for trail, foot Correct. traffic and what have you? Correct. Okay. And does the fact that you're no longer defining it as a road change the nature as to whether, because you change the definition as to what that is, not that intentionally change it, but since it's no longer a quote-unquote road, does that change the applicability of that trail, if you will, to um, the buffer zone? 
In other words, if I, I think I think I think you can look beyond that, and 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 if if none of this had transpired, and it came to me now, um, knowing full well that that they didn't, he didn't need that as a road. I could I could justify saying, okay, grass it open, and now and let it grow back to 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 whatever it can grow. Realizing that a track is going to go up there on occasion, and people are going to walk in there with a path. The only difference being is, is that it's a hard pan surface compared to what was there before. So really, that's the only difference. So I don't see it as a, as as much as much more than a trail, which which we have trails. Now, now you used the phrase um, road and talked about classifying it as a road at one point, and then not. Are, when you refer to classifying it as a road, are you referring to the 99 permit application? Well, the 99 permit application was for a driveway to get to, to get to a single-family dwelling, and that's when the road was put in under those premises. So it had the blessing from the public works. There was no permit necessary from my office at that time because because there was no there was nobody had nobody had actually uh, gone out and delineated the the upland edge. Not to say that makes it right. But 10 years down the road, if you, if you let it grow back, and there's no, I can't stop somebody from running a tractor. Up there. I guess that's my point. And, and the application was for a driveway as opposed to a road? Is Correct. Well, it was for, for an access road. Yeah, a driveway, whatever you might call it. It was, an, it would never, it was going to be a, a long driveway, basically. But you could call it a, a road. By definition, I don't think it ever was a street. So would it be a private access way then, under the ordinance? It wouldn't be a private access way because I a think... A privately owned and maintained access road to a single lot that does not meet minimum street frontage requirements of this ordinance? If it doesn't have street frontage, then it would have, in 2000, it would have required plan board, site plan review or a private access way in lieu of frontage. But, and I'm not sure whether there was a frontage enough to make that legal yes, anyways. I, I assume that maybe, that maybe it was the case, but. Um, Bruce, but the simple want? fact that the grass went over, it, 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 from my perspective, setting aside any of this, is that the road is, gonna, is gone. It, it, is I cannot control tomorrow or next week whether he runs a Who tractor. drives over there with a tractor, right? So, I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. So were all, those all the points you wanted to make, or did you have points? Um, the only one I wanted to make is, I guess that was the, the, the permitted uses, to me, is clear that they're are resource-related uses, there are residential uses, there are non-residential uses and accessory uses. Agriculture is not is neither a residential or non-residential use. I believe it's a standalone use, and that's why it's listed as such. So I don't think you group it into either one, because it may be on either one of, of, of a residential lot or a commercial lot, but bottom line is it's got its own category. And it does not require a site plan review because? It doesn't require site plan review because uh, resource related, I mean resource related uses um, aren't listed on what we just went through. Okay. There's no place to, to, that says that the site plan review was required for resource related use. So I guess that's, that's all I have at this point. Any more questions for Mr. Smith? Okay. The only, the other, only other issue I might, I might as well touch on, and I don't think we did, but there are, there's three or four trees that, that have been taken down uh, within that buffer area. And, and if I was waiting on enforcement because the applicant was still up and down whether he was going to take that to the planning board. If he was, that the, the approval would allow him to strip that. So that issue is out there, and it may be have to may have to be addressed if he decides to pull that completely. But pull what the application? Uh, 
if he pulls the application from the planning board. It's currently pending, but they ask that, for that more. resource. Yeah, for that area that's in the resource protection. Yeah. As I understand, the current status is he filed a request for a permit with the planning board. The planning board asked him for more information, and right. now he's deciding whether or not to continue to prosecute right. that permit. Right. And at such times, if he if if he gets approval, then that's a done. It's a, it's a moot point. Uh, if he if he pulls out completely um, and and makes that statement to me, then we're gonna I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to address unless he unless it's part of a, a larger timber harvesting operation, then then it may be required to plant some some trees to replace that. Okay. Uh, so that's remediation taken care of, but but uh, not necessarily at this point. So as you see that in your mind, that's separate and apart from the issues that are before us today. I do. Okay. Can you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Can I just uh, sure. go back to one other, just, I guess, factual question that I have? Is it, and it concerns the road slash trail, uh, is it the proximity of that road to the um, RP1 district yes. that's giving rise to the concern that it should be site plan? There should be a site plan yeah, review. Yeah, it's, it's within the 250 foot bump okay. from the upland edge. It's not necessarily the, the, the plantings of the, the blueberries per se. It's the proximity of the, of the access road to the RP1 district. It's, yeah, it's kind of a, I'm, I'm drawing you back in, yeah. If you could just identify yourself for the record. Uh, Bruce LaBoff, I'm the for the record. You gotta have to talk here so the reporter will get it. I think it's fair to say, and speaking for Mrs. Beecher, she has nothing against blueberries. It's not, a, it's not the issue of planting blueberries. Um, it's all of the potential impacts of the operation on her, her lot and her um, residential use. And, and key to that is the threat that there's going to be um, two things. One people traipsing up and down here in, in droves, potentially, during the, the busy season, which, you know, which is in feet of her house. And also, as was mentioned, the possibility of people parking wherever parking is not prohibited by the ordinance, which would mean possibly everywhere along winding road, winding lane, a uh, window lane, I'm sorry, which is a very narrow uh, passageway as it is. So having people, and, and presumably people could park on either side of the lane. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's those kinds of impacts. She also has concerns about potential impacts on her septic, which is right in the rear of her lot, downgrade from the agricultural operation. I think, and those, those are all issues that can be quite easily and readily addressed in a site plan review. And I don't think, I understand Bruce's concerns about the, the character of the town and the history of agriculture, but I don't think that site plan review has to be this big monster threat to um, farm operations that are favored and would I, I was just going by the history. The Absolutely. History. But my point is, I don't think going through the site plan review is going to kill this project, and we're not trying to kill this project. We're just trying to minimize the impacts, particularly um, foot traffic and, and tractor traffic and, and parking, mostly. Have you had discussions with the other parties to try to resolve that? We absolutely have, and I, uh, I thought we had some sort of concept arranged where there was going to be parking available off the lane and only very, very minimal use. They were going to have another access way for pedestrians. And we've tried to work that out, but, um, and I wrote to them outlining those possibilities, and we, we just need to have something that, that guarantees that that's going to be, rather than just an oral agreement that can be breached any time. Either we get some sort of agreement with them on those things that's binding, or we get 
public official review that requires it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, opposite the appellee. Good evening, Chairman Galino, members of the board. My name is Joanna Taranjo. It's like Toronto with a J in place of the second T. I don't mind if you butcher it. Before I was married, I was brown, which was a whole lot easier to say <laughs> and spell. Um, so feel free to call me Joanna. Um, we are here tonight. I am going to briefly walk through my letter because I know it's dense and I know you got it late. Um, and try to kind of briefly address the arguments that were raised in the appeal and those that have been raised um, fresh tonight. I'm gonna to start with site plan review issues and then go on to the access road because that's how I address them in my letter. Um, essentially, our position is that the way that Council for Ms. Beecher is arguing that the planning board should determine whether to complete site plan review or not um, is backwards. Um, it's looking at it from the appeal standpoint instead of from the permitting standpoint. If you were a person trying to figure out what you could do on your property, the first thing that you would do would be to go and look at the section that applied to the district in your, that your property was in, right? You'd say, okay, my property is in the residence A district. I'm gonna go and look at that section and see what uses are allowed and what uses are not allowed. If you were to do that in this case, you would turn to page 57, which has at four, <coughs> 57 in the ordinance at section 19-6-1, sub B lists all of the uses which are permitted in the RA district, okay? Permitted means without, a planning board approval process, i.e. site plan review, no conditional use approval by the ZBA. Those uses listed at B include agricultural uses, or sorry, resource related uses, one, the fourth or fifth of which I believe I'm not looking at the page is agriculture. Below that at sub two are non-residential, residential uses, non-residential uses, accessory uses that are specifically listed as permitted. Okay. If you were to go down to subs C and D, you would see the categories for which other types of uses are listed, still in the same categories, resource related, residential, non-residential and the like, and for which conditional use is approval and other types of approval are required by the town. When you get to sub F, you see the uses in the RA district for which site plan approval is required. There are, I believe, four uses listed in sub F. One, I don't list in my letter, I don't know what it says. Two is non-residential uses listed in section 19.6 B3. Okay, we're in B1, agriculture. So that's not us, site plan review is not required. Two, non-residential uses listed in 16-6-1 C2, again, that's not us, we're in B1. Site plan review is not required. Four, any other use or activity listed in 19-9 applicability as requiring site plan review. Okay, there's one more category that we need to go and look at to determine whether our use, which is listed in B1, requires site plan review. If you go to that, it's the section in site plan review at 19-6, which counsel for Ms. Beecher was discussing with you earlier, which lists any non-residential expansion or change in use at two, and at four, any other activity or use requiring planning board approval, okay? Again, so my position, and I think it's very clear, is that that language at two and four in 19.6, which is site plan review, I think it's on or around page 130, 130 or 150, you guys were looking at it earlier and I didn't put the page numbers in for me, but I can find them. 220. 220, thanks. Um, so the, the language that is relied upon in 19-9 site plan review is, I think, pretty inarguably, pretty general. It's kind of saying any non-residential use. 
But it seems to me that the line is extremely clear that non-residential, as used in that sentence, cannot be read to include uses back in the regulations that are specific to the district that are specifically in a separate category that doesn't require site plan review. To me, it seems somewhat um, exaggerated or a, a stretch of an argument to say that that language was intended to pull into site plan review uses which are specifically listed separately in that district as, require, as not requiring site plan review. So what I'm saying is that the reason the argument is backwards is because it's arguing from the general to the specific instead of from the specific to the general. And that is, there's, I didn't put any cases in here, but there is tons of case law out there saying that when you're reviewing an ordinance, you look at the more specific language and you ensure that there are no contradictions therein. Um, so to me, that seems crystal clear. If folks have any questions about that, I'm happy to respond to those. Could you uh, address the issue of section 1981, uh, which uh, covers buffering of non-residential uses and which appears to contemplate agriculture as falling into the category of non-residential uses? Oh, I don't even know if I printed 1981. I only printed those sections that seemed like they were pertinent. What page is that again? Uh, it's page 1776. I can uh, read to you the per uh, pertinent portion, uh, which is uh, simply, the required side and rear yards of non-residential uses, comma, except agriculture, that are located within residential districts, on and on and on, um, it appears to contemplate that agriculture qualifies as non-residential use, at least for purposes of this section. Well, these are performance standards, first of all. And as we talked about, uh, or as Mr. McLaughlin talked about, um, performance standards apply only where the ordinance specifies that they apply. If you have a use that's subject to performance standards, it, the ordinance will tell you that it does. For agricultural uses in the RA district, these performance standards do not apply. So, uh, separate from, uh, from the application, uh, whether uh, performance standards are applicable or not, it, when we're looking to try to define non-residential uses, which outside of its use as a heading throughout the ordinance, I think there is no actual explicit definition. We just have examples that are put into the category. Um, I guess I'm looking for guidance of how, how do we decide whether agriculture qualifies as non-residential use or not. And the argument is that uh, non-residential uses and resource-related uses are not mutually exclusive categories. What the canons of construction would tell you over years of main case law is that where there's no definition, you have to use common sense. Common sense, I think, would tell you if you were looking outside of the structure of your ordinance, Agriculture is a non-residential use. You don't live in agriculture, right? I absolutely agree with that. I said it in my letter. The problem with that argument is that in the RA district, resource-related uses are listed specifically and separately from non-residential uses. To therefore argue that later, more general site plan review standards which list non-residential uses somehow intended to incorporate all of these agricultural uses into that, although agriculture is defined separately. It just defies anything that I've ever seen in terms of ordinance interpretation. So we have a list in the RA district which says that agriculture is separate from residential uses and non-residential uses and that it's a permitted use without site plan review, without conditional use review, etc. In Is it uh, the appellee's position that blueberry, planting of blueberry bushes is an agricultural use as is uh, pick your own operation or does that qualify as an agriculture related use? That would be our position, that both of those uses in the RA district are agricultural and are permitted without a permit in the RA district. Now, let's bear in mind that the question regarding the pick your own farm is somewhat unripe given that that does not yet exist on the property. There are 150 blueberry bushes Excuse on the there. Excuse pun, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, blueberries are almost ripe, a couple more weeks. Um, so, to the extent we're arguing about a pick-your-own operation that is not yet on the property, there are 150 blueberry bushes that are being used for personal consumption and gifts to friends and family. Are you suggesting that if they, that uh, we're going to revisit this if and when they start to have 
people visit their property? No, I don't think there is anything in the ordinance that requires site plan review for agricultural use in the RA district. I think that is clearly exempt from permitting. To the extent there are blueberry bushes planted in the RP buffer, which is the area that's 250 feet from the critical wetlands habitat. So we're not talking wetlands, we're talking the area within 250 feet. To the extent blueberry bushes are planted there, that requires site plan review by the planning board, yes. But the, let's go back to this question of having uh, pick your own customers come on the property. Yep. Are we to review this today based upon the assumption that that's going to occur? Or are you telling us that at this point in time we can't take that as a fact because they haven't made up their minds whether or not that's going to happen? What you're reviewing is the code enforcement officer's decision that site plan review was not required for blueberry, for agricultural operations in the RA district. And I think the ordinance clearly supports his decision. You're dodging my question. I'm not dodging your question. <laughs> I think that a pick-your-own facility for blueberries is an agricultural use. Okay, so you want us to consider it as a pick-your-own pick facility? It's an agricultural use, yeah. yeah. So that's um, almost everything I had was on the site plan review. I did want to go back to your point, again, on the performance standards and call out, but fortunately you asked me the question on it, that those, where those apply, the ordinance specifies that they apply. Uh, it is entirely possible that agricultural uses in other districts require site plan review. I didn't go and look. I would guess that your comprehensive plan breaks out or all kinds of uses in different types of categories, and that's why they're broken out like that in the districts. It doesn't in the RA district, and that's where our property is. If you were going to figure out what uses you were allowed to do on your property, you'd look at the regulations applicable to your property. So, moving on to the road, unless anyone has questions on the site plan review issue. I can, if I may just comment on that, except agriculture. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I believe, because of, of I've been involved with some, somewhat with the, with the changes, that, that, that the reason why that's put in there is so that everybody was clear that we don't want to take 25 or 30 feet of land and not allow people to have agriculture. So I think it was more to stress the point that it doesn't apply, even though it's probably not the place to put it. I think the concern by somebody on the committee was, oh, geez, let's make sure that everybody understands that we don't need to, this is just my, my personal observation. But I think that's the reason why it was added. So moving what on. it's worth. <laughs> moving on to the road. Mm -hmm. um, our position with regard to the road is that it is located in both, or the access, the gravel access, whatever you want to call it, is located in the RA district and the RP buffer. It's within both zones. It is an existing use that access has been there for, as Bruce said, since 99. So 12 years is that now? Um, it's probably 11 because I think it was built in the winter. But I could be wrong. Um, Anyway, it's been there a long time, and it is being allowed to grass over. It is being narrowed from 14 feet to 8 feet by planting of vegetation to revegetate certain areas. It is gated off. The intent is to use it for access for farm equipment, to um, take care of the property that's out back there, and for foot traffic associated with a potential future pick-your-own, if there were to be one, and for personal foot traffic um, when the people that own the property go up there to pick the blueberries themselves. Um, it is, I think, relatively clearly a use that is addressed in the same fashion as the underlying use which it serves. Um, counsel for Ms. Beecher indicated that it could, that there are no accessory uses listed on table 19-6-9, um, which indicates that table lists all of the uses and it indicates what type of permitting is required for those uses. Um, 
accessory uses are not on that list, and so council argued that they are therefore prohibited. Again, in derogation of common interpretation principles for ordinances, which would generally say that use of your property is allowed unless it is specifically prohibited. You would not generally read blanket prohibitions into an ordinance. I mean, think of the impact that that would have. No accessory uses are allowed associated with any of these um, uses that are listed. So any access that is associated with these uses would be prohibited. It just doesn't make sense. The opposite has to be the case, that uses that are necessary and incidental to the uses that are listed are allowed in the same manner as the use that is listed. Um, that seems to me to be pretty straightforward. Agriculture is listed as requiring a permit in the RP buffer. So, uh, However, just to quickly turn yeah. to your prior point about uh, items that are not listed in the table, um, in, in just so I make sure I have this clear, your argument is that um, the items not listed in table 1969 um, might be in, uh, an accessory use that is not listed here might be permitted. Is that is that your position? My position would be the necessary and incidental use, and that's the customary def definition of an accessory use, would be permitted in the same fashion as the use is on the table. Although we have the language of uh, subsection D, which states that uses shown as prohibited uses and any other use not specifically listed as permitted use or use permitted with a resource protection permit shall be prohibited. So it seems to explicitly state that if it's not listed, it's prohibited. Yes, I understand what you're saying, but and, generally and speaking, an accessory use would be considered part of the underlying use. And may, I don't think that by stating that any use is not listed, that it was intended to prohibit any accessory use. Because like I was saying, if you look at the common sense application of how that would work, that would mean that if access was required or any kind of small structure was required, that that would all be prohibited. Although this is in a section that's designated a critical wetland buffer overlay district. Which, which is 250, the area that's 250 feet from a wetland. It's a huge swath of land. So you've got your wetland area, and then you've got a circle that's 250 feet around that wetland area. Uh, not going into the wisdom of whether or not there should be a 250-foot buffer, nevertheless, the ordinance contemplates that there is a buffer yes. that exists to protect what are designated critical wetlands. Okay. It does not list in the table as a permitted use or even list as a use accessory uses. You're correct. It does not. It does, however, specify for agriculture which requires a permit in the RP buffer zone, that existing uses are permitted. Or exempt. So, or exempt from permitting, yes. So to the extent the use of the property is agriculture and the driveway was certainly in existence, it's been in existence since 99, is an accessory use or is part of that agricultural use, however you want to look at it, it's certainly existing and our position would be that it's therefore exempt from harmony. So setting aside the fact that accessory uses aren't listed, and even if you wanted to take the position that they are therefore prohibited and you could not have an access to property that could otherwise be developed or used, then there is still the exemption for existing uses, which the driveway is. There are pictures of the driveway at tab C of my letter. You can see it beyond the gate. And as you can see, it is um, essentially two ruts going between trees with some grass. I am not aware that there is any intent to have vehicular traffic using that access other than farm equipment necessary for the use of the property. Those conditions are already in place. Yes, February 11th. And what about the uh, point that's been raised by the appellant that um, this is not appropriate because it's actually an access on a different parcel? That parcel is owned by um, 
the grant. It's Rita it is Rita Preston, but she's family. I'm, she's I'm trying to remember exactly what the relationship is. is. The Bothell's mother's sister. Okay. And they're, to the extent right title and interest were necessary for these proceedings, it could be provided. I take it, have you had a chance to look at the case he cited? Um, the Union v. Strong case? No, I just got that citation tonight. Um, I would guess that it stands for the proposition that generally, I've looked at a lot of cases regarding accessory use and principal use. I am certainly aware that there are cases out there that say that the accessory use of property cannot overwhelm the principal use of a property. Um, I, I'm not certain that there is any case law out there, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, that says that an accessory use must be located on the same property as a principal use. I certainly believe there are plenty of access ways that go over property that is separately owned. I think that's a pretty common practice. And if I understand the status of this road, it's been there since 1998. 99. 99, yeah. and it's been allowed per the CEO's request. It's been allowed to vegetate more so that it's a narrower driveway at this point than it was before. Yep. And, and, and sorry, Lynn. Go ahead. Oh, Chris. Um, and so, by virtue of the fact that it's been allowed to return to its, or returning to a vegetated state, and because of the additional conditions that Bruce has attached to that, to that road, and the fact that, it exi that agriculture exists on, in Table 19.69 as a, as a permitted use or an RPP, the, for all those reasons, you would argue that, that the road itself is, doesn't require a site plan review. It would be after the fact site plan review for something that is arguably grandfathered and does not require a permit under the current table. Has the road been used for agricultural, or the pathway or the access way, however you want to classify it, has it been used for agricultural purposes during the last decade? During the what? Uh, ha has it been used continuously for agricultural purposes, at least since on it's installed? Correct. Would, I don't understand the difference between Yeah, there, I, I think that yeah. there's been timber harvesting, which is a different use. Um, I don't know that the use has been continuously agricultural since it was installed. It was orig originally installed to be a driveway to access a single family home back in 99. Yes. There's been timber harvesting, there's been clearing, there have been various uses like that that um, the access has been used for. And now you previously, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you used the example of not being able to access a property except by virtue of a pathway through a resource uh, protection buffer zone. Um, is that about accurate? The, uh, am I misstating that there? I'm not understanding. I, I think you were using an example a couple minutes ago. Uh, my, my primary question becomes, this lot does, however, have access on Route 77 and another portion of the lot. Is that correct? It has street frontage. There is, I don't believe there's any existing access drive or anything that's built over there. However, an access drive or a pathway could be perhaps installed on Route 77, assuming all other portions. I don't know the answer to that question. We're talking about lot 6-5. Uh, the, the, the lot where the blueberry bushes will be installed, the, the, the issue has been raised as to whether there is case law um, going to the installation and, uh, of a pathway on another lot and its classification as an accessory use, so on and so forth. Um, it begs the question of, well, this lot does appear to have access to Route 77 elsewhere, such that the pathway would not even need to run through uh, another lot where there's an issue as to title and relationship of the different lot owners. To be clear, there is no issue with regard to title. Um, <laughs> there is right title and interest. We're not required to submit that. We submit it as part of our planning board application um, and we, when we were planning on doing it as part of the RP buffer and that's not part of this appeal. 
Um, if this board needs that documentation, we can certainly provide it. To the extent we're talking about the code enforcement officer's determination with regard to whether the existing access required site plan review or not, I think the ordinance is clear in that it says that existing uses are exempt. To, and with regard to questions about whether there could or could not be a separate driveway built at some time in the future it is really somewhat beside the point when there is an existing access that's being in used. The existing use was originally for a single family home and then for timber harvesting. There have been, the access has been continuously used for different reasons. It was installed with a street opening permit um, as a driveway in 99, yes. And does that qualify as an, agri an existing agricultural use? I don't think it does. And, uh, I question, frankly, whether the RP categories were exactly the same back in 99. I don't know the answer to any of those questions. I don't know whether site plan review was or was not required. It's a, it is now a grandfathered existing use. What is the status of the application with the planning board? It has about 30 more days, I believe, to determine whether additional information will be submitted um, in order to continue with that application or not. And that decision has not yet been made, I don't believe. There have been a lot of resources devoted to some blueberry plants. Further questions? Any other com uh, comments from the no, thank you. colleagues? Okay, now uh, we'll hear any rebuttal that the uh, appellant has. I will try to make this brief. Most of the points I was going to make have already been addressed, I think. On the site plan question, I think council's argument would, if, if applied, would basically wipe out the applicability section and site, the site plan review section on the ordinance. I, mean, I, I think the, the position would be that whatever is specifically specified under each district is what controls and you, you have to ignore anything that's different from that in the general applicability section. And I don't think that's a proper interpretation. And to be, the argument is that the more specific governs, there is certainly some legs to that argument, but under the applicability, the general applicability section, um, 1992, it doesn't exactly say all non-residential uses. It says any non-residential expansion or change in use. So specifying non-residential uses in the district that needs site plan review, and then saying over here any non-residential expansion or change in use, that's not contradictory at all, and it's, it's not um, the general to the specific. It's two different specifics. And the only other point I'd make on the site plan review is that if there is a conflict with between provisions, section 1910 one on page 233 says that the more restrictive provision applies. So that rule of construction would control over the general versus specific rule of 233, you said? Yes, section 19-10-1. more restrictive and specific provision shall control. Right. And I would argue that they're both specific and... And how, how would we address a more restrictive and less specific provision? I'm sorry? Uh, the, the section 1910.1 contemplates a more restrictive and specific provision shall, uh, controlling. What about a more restrictive but less specific provision? 
which if, it could be that the if there's a conflict, the general of a specific rule of construction might might be something you would look at. But first, I would argue there's no conflict, and second, I would argue that they both have specific specificity that are different from each other. So that, that, those are my rebuttals on the site plan review. On the road, primarily two points. It's been argued that the road or, or path or driveway, whatever you want to call it, I don't think it matters what label we give to it, whatever it is, it is a use. And as has been pointed out, it's not an, you, you can't fall under accessory and get permitted in the resource protection. The argument is that it's an existing use. Well, first of all, it's not a legal existing use. It's not grandfather. It didn't come in before the ordinance. It was developed in the Resource Protection District. At the time it was developed, perhaps the code enforcement officer didn't know, nobody pointed out that it was in the Resource Protection District. Nevertheless, <laughs> it was, and it is. And it didn't get permitted as required. So it's not a legal existing use. And number two, the argument is that it falls under the exemption for uh, under 19.69 for agriculture existing uses. Well, it's not an agricultural existing use. Arguably, it's a use that was designed for for a home that I would say has been abandoned, or maybe it was used for timber trespassing. Although I think those facts aren't really clearly presented here. We don't, nobody said when or exactly how or how that played out. And again, the code enforcement officer didn't make any determination about grandfathering. In fact, specifically said that we don't have those sufficient facts to make that kind of determination. And I think that's that's about wraps it up for me, unless you have any further questions. Yeah, I just have a problem with, um, I'm trying to understand how you get around the um, language on page 58, permitted uses, the following resource related uses are basically allowed in residential district A, which is B, 1B agriculture. Um, it means it, you don't have to get a code enforcement officer permit or a planning board permit for that use. So you can do agriculture, but when you do it, you have to follow whatever other requirements there may be in the ordinance. And um, you know, as council said, you look in, in the district to see, are you permitted? Then you look to see what other requirements might be applicable to you. And maybe performance standards are, in which they are, articles seven and eight, which, Article 7 is general standards, so those standards apply. Article 8 is performance standards. Page. I'm um, looking at the table of contents for those. But, I'm sorry, under performance standards in the residential district, page 59. So you've determined that you've got a permitted use of agriculture. Staying within that district, you look on the page 59, performance standards. That's E at the bottom of the page. The standards of performance of Articles 7 and 8 shall be observed. Okay? I'm looking at the, just the table of contents for 7. 7 is general standards. The whole, whole article applies. 8 is performance standards. The whole article applies if, to the extent that you find something in those articles. Can, can we turn to a, a point that you brought up a couple of moments? Could you just let oh, sorry. answer the question? Thank you. And, and specifically, under Article 8, there are agricultural standards. So those would clearly apply. So you, you know agriculture is permitted, mm -hmm. but you also got to look to the performance standards to see when you're doing agriculture. Right. And then you go over 
to site plan review, which is F, right? Right. And you say, okay, because there's something that. else that's required, and you look at F, site plan review, and... You rely upon F4, right? That's right. And that takes you over to... Applicability. 1992. Right. Activities requiring site plan review. Right. And then you go down through that. Any, any non-residential non expansion, expansion or, change. or change. So your your whole theory rely, uh, hangs on the uh, argument that the, the phrase non-residential expansion applies to agriculture, right? Or change in use. Non-residential change in use. Right. That... that the agriculture would fall within the term within two. Right. And a, a corollary argument we've made is that under four, any other activity or use requiring planning board review, which at, at the time they were doing the proposed use within the resource protection district, they were arguing that that requires. But that's no more, right? Apparent. Well, it's it's tabled or. It, is not being currently pursued. But I would also make the argument that this use of this road here for agriculture is going to require a planning board permit. Require a permit because it's not an accessory use? Right. <clears throat> Anything else? So to turn to the point you made about uh, permitted uses in agriculture not requiring a permit, does that accurately describe uh, your comments? Uh, the, the question was, what, what is the, the, the purpose of having the categories here versus uh, the site plan review? And I think you made the comment that agriculture as a resource-related use, a permitted resource-related use, would not require a permit. Is that accurate? Not a code enforcement officer or planning board permit, correct. Right. So, and then you commented that you basically you turn to subsection F, site plan review, which lists the four different categories in that it's the fourth that then is triggered. Um, in order to trigger any of these four categories, though, it seems like subsection F implies that uh, the following uses and activities shall be subject, this is page, one, uh, page 63 at the bottom, the following uses and activities shall be subject to site plan review by the planning board according to the terms of Article 9, Site Plan Review, prior to the issuance of any building permit, plumbing permit, or other permit. So if there's no permit to be issued, is Site Plan Review ever triggered? I believe it is. And it doesn't say only if you're getting a permit. But if you are getting a permit, you can't get it until you've done the Site Plan Review. Any other questions for the uh, appellant? No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments before we close the hearing uh, and deliberate? Do anything further? I would like to just clarify um, that the performance standards for agriculture, to the extent there are any in the ordinance, do not apply um, to our agricultural use because sub E on page 58 lists those performance standards which apply to permitted uses such as agriculture in the RA district and agriculture is not on the list of performance standards that apply. So what the point that I was trying to make earlier is that this, these RA district provisions are extremely specific about what future provisions in the ordinance apply to each of the uses that are listed. And just because there is later a performance standard that addresses agriculture, one cannot assume that it applies to all agriculture. You have to look at the provisions applicable to your district in the ordinance and determine whether they apply or not. And in this case, they do not, nor is site plan review required for agricultural use. Okay, we're going to close the... Uh, Mr. Smith, do you have anything else you want to add before we close the public part of this? No. Okay, very good.
Okay, we're going to close the public part of the hearing and open up discussion from the board members. Um, comments? It sounds like the issue uh, to, I would suggest approaching the issue of um, the blueberry bushes and the agricultural use prior to the pathway. I don't know if there's any preference in order of discussion. No, go right ahead with that approach. So uh, as an as initial, initial issue, the, the uh, appeal is directed to the decision that this is an agricultural use in the agriculture, uh, that an agricultural use does not require site plan review within the uh, RA district. So setting aside the pick your own issue and whether it falls into an agricultural use, use the cat, that categorization has not occurred. That doesn't sound like it's before us. All that, and also it sounds like what the uses they're actually contemplated right now is uh, an individual privately picking blueberries on their own bushes that are planted. It may or may not become a pick your own operation in the future. But for the present, it is just a individual private use of blueberry bushes all currently just planted in the RA district where that, because it doesn't involve pick your own, would all qualify as an agricultural use. We just, we just stop on that point for a second. I heard the applicant say when I pressed her on that point was that the, the current uh, plan is to have pick your own and that will be part of this operation and that's what Mr. Smith was asked to review. So, so that then, um, that becomes an issue then as to did Mr. Smith review pick your own and classify it as an agricultural use? That's my understanding. So I would classify a pick your own operation much like a maple syrup operation as a uh, agricultural accessory or an agricultural related use. I do not believe it falls into agricultural use. The agriculture related use was recently added to the ordinance and my understanding is that it contemplates operations such as these which blueberry picking, strawberry picking, uh, maple syrup operations, such operations. Although again to the extent that that classification is not necessarily before us, it might not be right for our decision right now. In our use, and so assuming it's agricultural related use. Go ahead. Uh, we then have to look to the ordinance and determine if an agricultural related use is permitted in the district. And proceed from there and consider both an agriculture related use and an agriculture use. That is assuming that 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 the pick your own is before us. I would argue that the issue before us is whether agriculture is permitted without a um, w without site plan review, not whether agriculture related use requires site plan review. Well, what's before us, I mean, just reading through the notice, what's before us, reading through the notice is on, on this issue of the, uh, the RA district, is not requiring a site review for agricultural use of lot 6, six, six lot 6-5. Six so what's before us is, is it or is it an agricultural use? Not is a pick your own blueberry an agricultural use or not? Which is why I would say that we focus just on, I, I, I agree, plus that we, we are just deciding the issue of whether an agricultural use requires site plan review. And we won't be deciding, therefore, whether blueberry, a blueberry pick your own operation qualifies as an agricultural use or an agriculture related use. Uh, just out of curiosity, how did, how are you evaluating the application or, or the appeal as far as the use of that? that, that well, uh, I, 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 it's my interpretation of the audience that, 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 that the byproduct of the blueberries for picking is part of the agricultural use. It's not an agricultural related use because an agricultural related use was added to the audience to allow a farmer uh, to make 
dollars from, from something that's related but not necessarily part of so the by growing. So by virtue of the fact if a farmer was planting blueberries and sold his blueberries, the general public would have you versus established a you, you pick you know you you pick enterprise on the same property that essentially it's and it's I, farm income either way. I, it's all agriculture use. We don't we don't we don't review strawberry. If somebody was to plant more strawberries on a piece of land it wouldn't go before the plan board. Not 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 as long as I've interpreted it that way. I mean, no, I understand. Do you interpret um, uh, the district RA to include agricultural related uses? Did, did it include agricultural related uses? Yeah. I, I would note that agriculture related use, the language of it mirrors accessory use uh, very, very closely, and the RA district does permit accessory uses. If you look at page 58, subsection B4, access, uh, A, accessory building structure use is permitted. It just seems like a blueberry uh, pick your own operation is a different animal than just a regular agricultural operation. And Under, it's 4 H agricultural related uses, right? It, ah, good point. Page yes. 59. Oh, saw that exactly. Explicitly listed. Yeah, specifically uh, yeah. You see that? 4 H. The distinction between agriculture and agriculture related is not really of great moment here, do you? It may come into play with some of the, the other issues before us. I guess the question that I raised was just whether the issue of it, whether an agricultural related agriculture related use is permitted is before us at this point. Okay. And I think the answer to that based upon the notice is yes. Yeah, and based upon, as I understand, the evidence that was before us, I think everybody's proceeding on the assumption that they're going to, part of the concern here is the people that are coming, going to be coming to the property, and part of the desire here is to be able to sell our blueberries. So I think you should assume that that's going to, it's part of the, uh, the fact pattern. Anything else on the... Um, well, I'll, I'll chime in a little bit on this first issue, which is, is this, uh, does this require site plan review? I guess my thought is that um, for a couple reasons, the agriculture and agriculture related use of a parcel under the ordinances does not require site plan review because if you look at page 63, subsection F, as pointed out uh, by the panel, um, that section seems to apply with regard to issuance of a permit. And it's pretty clear that this does not require a permit. So the need for a site plan review seems to be triggered by that. Furthermore, when you go over to this section, which is the one that the appellant focused on, um, you always have a hard time finding, but it's on page 220. Um, the appellant hung his hat on 1992A2, which deals with any non-residential expansion or change in use. Well, it seems like there's at least three categories. There's residential, non-residential, and agriculture. And it doesn't seem to me that that is uh, intended to drag into it agriculture within that subsection 2. And also... 1992-4, any other activity or use requiring planning board review in the ordinance, zoning ordinance, that argument seems a little circular. And I appreciate the argument, which I think Appellant's Council made a very good point. Keen eyes picked up on um, 
page 176, buffering of non-residential uses, the, it was a good catch to see the required side and rear yards of non-residential use except agriculture. That, that can certainly be interpreted to suggest that it, uh, non-residential use includes agriculture, but I think the intent of that uh, addition, sometimes you get funny sentence construction when people amend things. And to me, the way I read that is that when they added that uh, little addition in June 10, 2010, as Mr. Smith suggested, that was designed to try to be more friendly to agriculture, so out of an abundance of caution, they stuck it there. I don't think with giving, uh, without giving a lot of thought to the fact that it's maybe a different category of fish uh, than um, residential or non-residential. Um, so I don't think that necessarily defines the word non-residential as including agriculture. But it's good catch. I like the argument, but I'm, I don't put a lot of, I, I don't think it trumps the other part of the statute. Um, so those are my thoughts on whether or not this is required site plan review. Yeah, I, I, I take probably a, a similar view I, as it relates to uh, the question of, um, you know, the RA district. And, and I, you know, I, I think I'm probably, as Len knows, I'm one of the non-lawyers in the room. And I take a very straightforward approach to some of this stuff. And I think the fact that if you, if you read the definition of um, permitted uses within the RA district, um, agricultural is a, is a permitted use, and um, uh, you know I think uh, as as is agriculture within Table 19-6-9, and um, you know from my perspective, you know the the intent is is that um, the use is a you know I think the use is blueberry or maybe not the U pick because that's a a uh, point to be maybe discussed later, but, but I think the use is for agricultural purposes is, is consistent with the, uh, the RA district. Any other comments on the site plan issue before we move over to the road? I, I would echo everything that's been said and uh, would agree basically uh, focusing on the subsection F and the fact that it seems that uh, site plan review is triggered by the need for a permit. Um, furthermore, the, I'd point to the purpose laid out in section 1961 uh, of the residence A district, which is that um, purpose of this district is to allow residential development that is compatible with the character, scenic value, and traditional uses of rural lands. It, it, to me, that further provides evidence that the, the, the point of the district initially is that it is a rural land with uh, character, scenic value, and traditional uses of farming, and that the restrictions are focused uh, on uh, restricting residential development, which is why to then read it as requiring site plan, plan review for agricultural use seems somewhat contrary to the purpose that's laid out, but I would primarily focus on the fact that site plan review appears to be triggered by um, the need for a permit. And I would also echo the, the comment that the section 1981 observation regarding non-residential uses is, uh, uh, does raise questions for me, but again, subsection F. Uh, doesn't, uh, by virtue of it triggering only when a permit is required, uh, doesn't require us to go to that, that uh, length in deciding whether agricultural use qualifies as non-residential use. Any other comments on that one? Okay, why don't, why don't we move over to the question of the access uh, driveway, like a better phrase. Um, anybody, any comments on that who wants to tackle that issue? You're smiling, go for it. Uh, I found it the more difficult issue, personally. Yeah. Um,
I note some of the, the factors at play here is that it, it appears to not be in dispute that at least portions of this pathway, if not all of the pathway, um, although it sounds like it's in both, so therefore um, not necessarily perfectly clear to me what, what uh, amount of it is in all of the buffer zone. Um, the, the buffer zone exists to, prevent, to protect critical wetlands, and as the uh, code enforcement officer observed, this gravel has been, is there presently. It's been there for some period of time. And to dig up and remove that gravel, would that contemplate, um, does that fit with the entire purpose of the, the resource protection zone and the critical wetland buffer when you're, you're causing upheaval and churning this pathway? So that, that's just a, a, an observation of some of the facts that have been raised. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I think on the, it's, it's clear that, well, uh, the fact that I guess it's kind of re re over time returning to its natural state is, is a, um, you know, minimizes the impact on the, the buffer zone to some degree, but I'm also, I guess, um, I'm not sure I, I totally buy into the, to the fact that I mean, the, the road was initially approved back in 99 as a driveway. And, you know, I don't think that, therefore, when we talk about it's an existing exempt use, you know, one could argue it might be an existing use. I don't think it was an, an, an existing permitted use, uh, or at least, you know, currently. In other words, it was a driveway that was approved back in 99 for potentially a house. And, you know, over time, it's now turned into a, you know, access road slash maybe it's a road slash maybe it's a trail um, you know I, I I think the impact I agree I, I would tend to agree that you know looking at the pictures that the impact on the you know on the on the buffer zone is probably um, lessened over time but I'm still having a hard time I guess coming to grips with um, you know whether it's whether it's truly a uh, you know a trail that that's been grandfathered, which I think is in essence the the argument as to why a site plan review isn't isn't necessary. So there, you you would say that there's a question as to whether this is a uh, change in a pre-existing use from. Um, residential driveway to um, timber uh, access way, uh, whatever it may have been previously used for, is that the same use as permitting uh, members of the public, uh, potentially in a large number, of member, uh, large number of members of the public, to access this pathway to uh, reach a commercial operation? Right. Does the fact that it's going to be a I mean, it is going to be used. I guess it's still used on a periodic basis now to harvest timber out of the out of the lot. So the tractor is going up there periodically now, as is, and have been for some time. Okay. Now going forward, there's going to be at least more foot traffic going through there. Um, at least again during the season, I imagine, when you're picking the uh, picking the blueberries. Um, I, can, I can I can only tell you that that that, that I do remember that the road, based on what, on what, uh, uh, what was study, I don't know, but I do remember that the, that, that the road itself was placed, or the driver was placed in such a position that it had to, it had to completely hug the corner of, of the beach a lot in order to stay away from the resource and meet the standards. And that's why there was nothing done on the code enforcement level through the years because that's always stuck in my mind that there was not an issue for whatever reason. If you review the file, you don't, you don't necessarily come to that conclusion. But, but in, in my mind, the, the reason why I didn't take any action when I found out years ago that there was an access driveway put in and it was, was potentially within that 
resource protection, I just recall that, that, that I remember that corner being over there and for whatever reason I didn't take action because I didn't think there was an issue. Hence, fast forward 11 years, 10 years, that's why I'm, I'm given the, the, the owners or the people who use that the benefit of the doubt that the town, include myself, was aware that that, that driveway was in there and, and based on whatever we had for evidence, we, I didn't take any action. And that's why I went, another reason why in, that I went to the extent of to make, to, to making it work now because there was, it already had been disturbed and, and another service been put in it. I'm sorry, another what? Another, that it had been stir, disturbed and, and it was, it, it's, not, it's not a natural situation. Sure. That's why I was going to allow that natural, that, that, un, that disturbed portion to remain. And, but but limit it to, to to as much as I could to protect the resource. So it wasn't I wasn't I wasn't really making that decision blindly. Um, the history it it, it it led me to believe that, that if I if I had more evidence at the time I might have taken more action but, but that I, I must have been comfortable to the extent that that I knew that they had to hug that corner, but I haven't been able to find that report uh, in the files. But, but, but since then, the, the, it, it's, it's clear that, that with new wetland studies, uh, to, to find out whether that lot nine is even buildable, um, it's obvious that it's within the buffer. There's no question now. So whatever that's worth. You know, I don't usually back up 10, 11 years when I do something and, 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 and I didn't take action because I thought it was okay. It just doesn't make any sense. So, I guess then the, you know, it, it, to me it boils down to um, it's an access road that's been in existence, it's within the buffer zone. Does it require a site plan review? Is it material enough to require a site plan review? Or isn't it? Is, I guess, the question in my mind. The, the Bruce, the planting in the resource protection zone requires a permit from the planning board, right? The what? If they wanted to continue with their attempts to plant or to change the growth within the resource protection zone, they would have to prosecute their application, right? It's a slightly uh, different issue. I'm not talking about the, 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 the access issue now, as I understand it, where the hemlocks were cut, cut, they filed an application with the planning board to deal with that, right? Correct. And if they wanted to plant in that area, could they do it with a permit? In, in, a, in a, that buffer area, they yep. would have to get site plan review for that, yes. But if you treat it as a, you know, if it's treated as a road for, the, for that purposes, then new, new street construction uh, is not allowed. I'm sorry? It's not allowed. Street, new, new what? Street construction is not allowed. Number 27, although existing road reconstruction is permitted with a permit. So basically, although is this reconstruction? I know action would turn into an action that, that from a code enforcement standpoint. <laughs> what provision are you looking at? Just give me a site and verse. That, that I didn't take any action because I thought it was okay bothers me to reverse that 10 years down the road. Mm -hmm. That's why I tried to compromise with what I did uh, to, to limit it, its use so that the town would have some control because if, if, if I tell them to, to take everything out, I still can't stop them from using that, that area to bring a tractor down or can I stop somebody from walking it. Mm -hmm. so, 
this is the best of the two worlds. Yeah. In other words, it's sensible. Yeah. If there was just a muddy pathway of just dirt, there's no restriction that you, there's nothing in the ordinance that prevents someone from just allowing the general public to cross it, to cross right. their, their lot right. through the dirt and the mud. So that's a dilemma I was faced with when I was trying to figure out what I could do to be fair to, to not only Adam realizing that this has been there for a while, but also for Joyce, so that as far as, as far as not to protect the resource. I hate to that I made a mistake, but I mean, maybe I did by not taking action, but I... Why did you, um, the appellant indicates that last year you were of the opinion that they had to remove the whole thing. Yeah, that was a hard, that was my hard line. Um, and, and, and that's when I went, I went looking in the file. Because I had looked in the file, I couldn't find anything that would justify that. Um, that's why I took that hard line, because I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't see any way that it would, could remain. But then when I got thinking about remembering the fact that I didn't take action when I found out of it, about it some seven years ago because, because of that issue about hugging that property and that the, that, the, that the buffer didn't go that far. That's when I had second thoughts that maybe I should try to work with them as best I can. Well, your point, if I understand it, is that this is not a roadway because it's not public traffic going in there and it's just foot traffic and somebody driving a tractor across their own land. That's correct. So it's not basically a roadway and it's not approved as a roadway. It's now a roadway? It's not a roadway. It's not a roadway, that's correct. And as, well, my thoughts on the subject are this. Based upon the assumption, which I think is accurate, that they have a gate across it and they're not allowing public access across the property, right? And the only vehicle use being used across that um, gravel path, let's call it, is for the tractor and the farmer's own equipment going across that property and foot traffic and nothing more, then I don't see it as being a roadway, a public roadway. A person can always drive a tractor across their own property anywhere they want on their property and uh, in a buffer zone too, I believe, now maybe you might be able, not be able to do it in wetlands more out of practical reality that you'll get stuck. But as a practical matter, anybody can drive their own vehicle. They don't even need a license to do it, as far as I understand it. So this is not a roadway. And I don't see this with that limitation that there's no public transportation going down that, drive, down that pathway. I don't see it as a, um, an issue that is trigger, you know, triggers anything under the ordinance. Um, even willing to uh, listen to other people's comments ab about that issue, but I don't see it triggering that. I also note that from the photograph that's attached to the Pelley's papers as Exhibit C, um, they have a gate across the, the uh, pathway, and it's pretty well overgrown, and I would imagine a tractor is not going to be zipping up and down there at 60 miles an hour. Um, so they'll probably go lumbering down there in the morning and lumbering back out at night. Um, I don't see it as being particularly problematic. Um, I'm also based my comments on the assumption that they're not uh, growing in the resource protection zone, they're just growing in the RA zone. And I'm also point out to the appellant that, um, you know, there, there is still opportunities uh, the traffic issue, the public parking issue, is really a issue that seems to me that you deal with the, um, you know, the, the police in the town and the uh, CEO in the town to deal with any parking issues that arise on public streets. You know, people are parking in no parking zones. Obviously, that's an issue, but I don't think that's within our jurisdiction to really trigger those. I don't think I don't see a way under the ordinance that we really can deal with that. Uh, as part of this application. And as far as the case law that was cited, I mean, I don't have a copy of your case, um, but I would find it surprising to have it say that 
you cannot, you know, utilize multiple parcels to, you know, conduct agriculture in a zone that allows for agriculture, um, or or to allow access to a back lot that has agriculture on it, so long as they have the consent of the owner that they're going across the property with. So to me, it's um, I don't see the trigger under the ordinance for being concerned about a tractor and some foot traffic going across a related party's, a family member's property to get to a back lot. And so long as the back lot is appropriately being utilized for agriculture purposes allowed by the RA zone, um, my thought is that, you know, I don't see a lot of, uh, hook, uh, you know, much of a hook for appellant's case. Uh, on this appeal. Other thoughts? That seems reasonable. reasonable. Could you classify the pedestrians crossing along this pathway as a non-intensive recreational activity, such as hiking? Why do you need that? Um, I would point to page 132, uh, use number eight. Because there's no blueberry picking occurring on this pathway, there's no use of a car on the pathway. 132, eight? Eight. Um, they're simply walking across the, the lot. You're concerned that you might otherwise re require? Oh, it, it, it's permitted as in there's no resource protection permit required for uh, that aspect of it, which then just raises the issue of the placement of the gravel on the ground. I think there's a danger with trying to make some other classifications on something that, that is already black and white. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me that that, um, including but not limited to language, certainly opens it up beyond that. And it would seem that, you know, people going, they're probably the growing season or the, the harvesting season for blueberries is like three or four weeks long, I would imagine. And um, that's probably not anywhere more intrusive than horseback riding. Certainly hunting has a longer season cross-country skiing, et cetera. I don't think it's within the board's purview to, to go that extra mile to, to classify, but. Yeah. The other thing I would note is that under number 20, you need a permit to put up a catwalk or footbridge in a resource protection zone. Um, but this doesn't, I don't believe, rise to that level. And you can see the sense of that if you're crossing marsh or something like that with an elevated walkway, um, then I could understand the need for a per 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 permit to make sure it's done correctly and doesn't, you know, taint the water with arsenic or something like that. Um, but I would tend to think that gravel that's pre-existing there for the last 12 years hardly rises to that level. The, the one issue I have with the just saying, well, the gravel's been there for 12 years is it's basically saying that a, if an act occurs that is in violation of the ordinance, uh, once 12 years passes, we, we don't know what the exact period of time is, but 12 years is enough that it's then forgiven. Do you have any objection to receiving further comments? The appellee wants to respond to that question. Absolutely. Anybody have object concerns with that? Bruce, do you have any concerns with that? If I opened up the discussion back up? No. Okay. Kelly? 
Joanna Toronto again. I just wanted to clarify um, the point that I was trying to make earlier and that I believe Bruce was trying to make as well, and that is that we are not, no one knows whether the ordinance at the time prohibited the current location of the access way because there's some lack of clarity regarding whether the wetlands as they currently exist now were of the same quality 12 years ago such that the buffer would have been the same. I can't answer that. I don't think Bruce can answer that and I think that's Well, the ordinance has changed, but, but the, 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 the findings The quality of the wetlands, could, I'm could sorry. Change, yes. There are different setbacks for different qualities of wetlands and so it's, there's not clarity about whether at the time that the road was, the access, whatever you want to call it, was put there, that it was in fact illegal. Is there a statute of limitations issue that may have run over 12 years? Well, I just, I was trying to use common sense. That's no, I understand. <laughs> just to the appellee, isn't there, is there a statute of limits that pre prevents going back that far anyway? I think that how we deal with that generally is just by calling things that we don't know grandfathered and then <laughs> go forward. Um, I've never That's heard awesome. of a statute of limitations for um, ordinance violations, but I know for general um, torts, it's what, six or seven years, so we're long past that. It, and I would note that it seems that the, the gravel aspect of this, that portion of this use to the extent that it was a violation is not changing. It's just the traffic going across it, it seems. Pellant. Again, Bruce McLaughlin for Pellant. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, in terms of statute of limitations, I don't believe there is any statute of limitations, and grandfathered is a very defined term. It's something that existed before the applicable restri restrictions went into effect, and that's not the case here. Um, and if I could just make two comments about some of the other conversations so far. The, the, the issue of of requiring a permit, um, which came up late in the, the dialogue, I would just draw the, the board's attention to 1992. What page are you on? Page 220, 1992 again. The preamble for the applicability says that site plan approval is required prior to undertaking any alteration or improvement of the site, including grubbing or grading, or prior to obtaining a building or plumbing permit for the activities, or commencing any of the following activities. So it's, you know, the general applicability provision of the site plan review makes clear that the requirement of a permit is not a prerequisite to site plan review, I, I think. And I have one other. So I just want to make sure I'm clear and understand your, your point there. Are you hanging your hat on the first clause, or are you just hanging your hat on A, 2, and 4? Um, well, the, the preamble, that whole sentence, I think, makes clear that having a required permit for the activity is not a prerequisite to site plan review. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I see your point. I, I wasn't hanging, I wasn't relying that much on that, that, that argument, though I, I think what troubles me, or what I think weighs heavily against your position is the, the section of um, permitted uses, agriculture, you know, the following resources related uses are allowed, agriculture, and then under the following accessory uses for age, agriculture related uses. So, I mean, that's tough to overcome, it's so clear. Okay. And the only other point I was going to make is the whole question of whether this is a road or something else and whether you're just going across the lot without a road. I mean, the fact is using it for tractors to access a farm and using it for people to access the farm to pick, it's a use. You're using that lot whether you've got a, a paved road for it or not. I mean, if you're parking cars on it, you're using it for parking, whether you've paved it for parking and improved it for parking. 
A fact is a use is a use, regardless of to the extent to which you can prove But just because it's a use doesn't mean require a permit. It's, well, if it's an agricultural use in the Resource Protection District, it does. That's the point I'm on there. Thank you. situation with the gravel access way is, is, is you have, we have two alternatives here. We leave it with the conditions so that it's not a road or you blow it all out, restore it back in actual, he still gets to use it for, with his tractor and for a power. So it really makes no difference. The end result is going to be the same. I think it's a much better situation to leave it well left alone where it's a solid surface that can blend back in as much as possible, but you don't have that runoff. You don't have all these issues, all these controls. Well, I think the, 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 I thought the appellant's point is not so much that you got to dig it out, but that you need a permit because it's a, um, it goes, it's an agricultural can't, use. You can't on, get a permit for that. I'm sorry? It can't, it won't allow a site plan review for a role. He's not saying a site plan review, he's saying a permit. The what I hear him saying is 9699 requires a permit to allow that activity. And I guess my Resource protection permit. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess my read of that section is that it doesn't because it doesn't rise to the level of a catwalk or a footbridge, and it's no more intensive than the recreational uses listed under number eight on page 132. So I don't requ I don't believe it does require a permit. Further comments? I assume that, you know, uh, I, I make that comment based upon the assumption that I'm sure the appellee is aware of is that you are dealing with resource protection zones and they are expected to be protected. And to the extent you uh, go beyond the expression of what your intended use of that pathway is, obviously you're you're pressing, you're pressing outside the envelope of what I think is anticipated by the ordinance. What I see the applicants request is for a very narrow uh, use of that pathway. It's not for um, you know regular um, cars driving up and down to go pick blueberries and back. It's for foot traffic during the growing season and from some tractors going back and forth. Uh, and I think in Cape Elizabeth, 
um, you know, the resource for protection zones have been preserved basically for that kind of um, what I would call light, light scale or limited impact use and for people to enjoy it. I don't think it's been designed to uh, isolate otherwise fully, um, fully uh, usable property like the property that they have in the back, which is RA zone. I don't think the intent was to isolate those properties and make the resource protection zones so uh, inviolate that you know you, you always have to get a permit for everything that happens in those areas. So I think when you start, I think the, the a careful read of that section shows that when you're going to do something from somewhat more dramatic, like a catwalk or a footbridge, um, then you got to start talking about permits, and I just don't see it rising to that level. Damming, uh, they list damming, dredging, grading, um, those are the kind of things I think that they're talking about there. So um, my thought is that it doesn't require the uh, permit for that very limited use. Any other comments? Okay, so, but I, I hear you, but you don't think that under 1969-28, which is you know, the, the, the use in agriculture is permitted so long as there's a resource, resource protection permit in place, and the only reason there's not a resource permit, uh, protection permit in place is because that that road was an existing, it was an existing use. It was quote unquote grandfather. Yeah, see, I don't think it's, it's the use, the agriculture is not in the resource protection buffer zone. Agriculture is on the RA zone, as I understand it. They've abandoned the intent to grow on their, either they're abandoned it or they're going to go get their permit to do it. Um, and just going back and forth across this area, I think comes under either um, section 8 on page 132, and it falls short of item 20 on page 133. So I don't see it as being, you know, I th you, know you, you also have to look, I think, a little bit to the purpose of the protection. And are we really concerned that a tractor going across that gravel, uh, even if it's a couple times a day, and a bunch of foot traffic is going to really impact the wetlands? I, I don't think so. Any further comment? I would agree with you on the foot traffic. Um, again, it's the, the, the tractor traffic that gives me pause in how to classify it and address it. Um, the moment that you introduce a motorized vehicle, it does begin to beg the question of whether this is a footpath, is this a driveway, is this a road, is this a, a street? What, what is the use that is occurring here? Um, and that, that's the part that's giving me pause with traffic, though. Well, Bruce has already put some conditions on the use of that, that road. That's in his email of February 11, 2011, where it says the use of the gravel access way shall be limited to necessary farm equipment and pedestrian traffic. Um, gravel access way shall be utilized on a seasonal basis only for its intended purpose as an accessory to be permitted agricultural use, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, there are some conditions around the frequency in which or, or the type of vehicular traffic that can go on that road. So. Mm -hmm. Again, though, the question becomes, how is it permitted under the ordinance, however? Um, and that's what I'm looking for. It, 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 one argument is that it's been there for some period of time. We don't know what the ordinance was at the time that it was put in necessarily. We don't know where the wetlands boundary was at that time. Um, if that's the case, then it becomes a question of, okay, well, is the use now changing? The, the gravel is not changing. It sounds like it's sitting there. And then it becomes the, the fact that the crossing this path with a tractor doesn't sound like it's a use that has occurred in the past. It sounds like it was originally contemplated as a driveway, then it was contemplated for, or at some point perhaps, for timber harvesting, but the use of a tractor for um, 
going forth, back and forth, um, was not necessarily a use that occurred previously. And that, that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around. Well, I thought, it had, I thought a tractor had been going through there somewhat frequently to harvest the timber. Now, Although, I, I guess I would, is timber harvesting and uh, tractor for maintenance of blueberry bushes the same? Um. One can make the argument about the impact on the road and whatnot, but by the language of the ordinance, where do we turn to to say that allowing the tractor is something that's permitted? Mm -hmm. and that, that's the part that I'm struggling with. Which uh, Pedestrian traffic does appear to be permitted is under from my perspective in looking at the ordinance, but the, the, the tractor is the one that I'm having issues with. Question for the, mind if I ask the question of the applicant? Do you have any objection? I mean the appellee? No, panel, yeah. Um, would it be possible to amend your use to uh, not run the tractor across the reef resource protection zone to save you. the foot traffic. I'm sorry, I lost you halfway through. Is it, is it a problem for you to get your tractor back there w without going across the resource protection zone on that gravel road? Is there another way of access for you? The safest and cleanest way is going to be over that existing area that has two ruts that are the same size mm -hmm. as the wheelbase of the tractor. Is there another way to drive over there that's equally convenient? I'm sorry. Run a tractor on 77? Go down 77 and then go up where you have road frontage? And would that require a lot of clearing of trees and stuff? I would guess that Public Works might not be excited about a tractor going over the edge of 77, but I don't know the answer to that question. I wouldn't tell someone to go down on 77 with a tractor and go across the edge of a road. Yeah. Would you have to do, is there a clearance, clearance there that you could get it across there? Because there's trees there? Yes. And houses. Couple houses. Couple. I'd be coming from here. It's my house. And now I'm on my way to the road. To get to the road, I also know these two fields. So it would be from that travel distance with the tractor down 77. Would you not have to drive across the actual wetlands to get in there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe you would. I think you would too. They are on that. So side. you can't, on the left side of the property here, you can't get in back through that way? Driving up into the property? I can. I still don't have access to the fields without starting back over again. I'm saying you can't go the other way directly up? I can, and most of the time I do. But in order to access the fields. Oh, those fields are where you're pointing now? These, those are, yeah, those this, are this is all part of the Preston lot, which I maintain. So those are the fields that we're talking I thought we were talking no, about. No, the blueberry fields are up here. These are just two fields. You can see them from 77 that I mow. Right, but, with but the tractor. With the, with the question tractor. is, can Separate you, use. Can you access, access the blueberry fields from... I can where your house is situated, essentially. You know. I can, yes. But as far as anybody else... You want to call the mowing agriculture on the same property? Yeah, I guess I'm confused because if you have vehicle access, tractor access across from your house directly to the blueberry fields without going through the resource protection zone, why is, that, why is it a problem just having access that way? I have personal access by way of a six foot driveway. Um, and then I come to a huge traffic problem with having anybody walk up my driveway. No, 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 no. no what I'm suggesting is the, the concern on the, on the panel here is that while foot traffic is clearly allowed under 19-6-9 sub 8, they're concerned that it's less clear 
to give you vehicular access across a resource protection zone. And it's not so much that you're going to cause a lot of problem here, but there's always precedential concerns that if we do it for you, then we've got to do it for everybody. Yep. He's so, saying, though, that he also uses Could I just finish my question? So if you have access directly across your property back there where you don't have to go through the RFP zone with your tractor, uh, can it be accomplished and avoid pressing the issue of having to run your tractor across the RFP zone? It can. The times that I run the tractor down this is to mow the road and to mow the fields. To mow the fields down there? Yes. Those are the only times that the tractor goes on there. So, we're talking like one so it's really not to, for, it's not for the purposes of the blueberries, it's for the purposes of mowing the, mowing the fields. And you know, mowing the road to the blueberries. And what, what zone are those two fields in? Is that a resource protection area, or is that um, is that a uh, RA zone? Can you also came up with this. Uh, what, what with the fields up? The fields. They're, 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 they're within the, the buffer. They're within the buffer. Anyways. Do we normally allow people to mow on the buffer zones? If it's it's, it's been it, that's filled land where the fields are, uh, so it's not it's not natural. It's, it's disturbed. So they can they can do things like mow because it's uh, it's been done since before the ordinance was they passed. The grandfather, yeah. the grandfather, the grandfather. Is it a um, residential lawn and landscape over there, such that would fall under the grooming exception on number eleven, grooming of existing residential lawns and landscaping? Depend on your definition of grooming. I think um, the, the chair hit the nail on the head for my concern here, which is setting a precedent of allowing motorized vehicles through a resource protection critical wetland buffer zone. But the irony is that he's mowing on <laughs> <laughs> Now we're dancing on the head of the pin, aren't we? All right. Any other questions, comments? So you're using the access road essentially relative to, to um, the tractors, essentially it's your mower. And it's to gain access to mowing buffer zones and the like. But relative to the heart, I mean, when you're harvesting timber up there, are you using that access road to go harvest the timber or are you accessing it through your, your own property line, your own, your own uh, through your property if you up to, up to the lot? We, when we have it logged, they access to there. I'm sorry? When we have wood harvested, that's where they access. You'd go up through the access road? Yes. Okay. To the extent that you're, I mean, do you, do you have, you envision having automated, I mean, there are such a thing as automated blueberry pickers, although typically it's done by hand. He's a hybrid from here. Yeah, so, you're, so it's all going to be hand picked. So, so, as a practical matter, there's not going to be tractors for purposes of blueberry harvesting. It's going to be a, the tractor that's going up, the tractors that are going up there are for timber harvesting, I assume, and, and the mowing. I think it's done. And when people pick blueberries, that we'd be able to carry them out. Yeah. If you've ever done that, you pick them in a flat, you load them on a on a tr tractor, and then go back out to your car so you don't carry any Okay, so I think we, at least I've got a little bit better appreciation for what type of traffic is going through that access road. It, it, it doesn't, it, it still raises the issue that, that, that uh, Mr. Straw has mentioned countless times, which is A, one, setting a precedent, and B, just literally we can't find anywhere in our handy dandy table here, you know, where, you know, <clears throat> mechanized equipment, if you will, farm equipment is allowed through a buffer zone. So, with that said, we got to find another way where we, 
you know, in my view, either find another way to get get tractor access up into that lot. Um, you know, because I think I think this is, you know, from my perspective, that that is creating more of a, I think it's creating more of a precedent than I care to set, as far as that goes. Man, let me follow up on something you just said. Do you envision folks going out, picking out blueberries, coming back with their flats, loading them up onto a tractor that's going to use this road and bring them back down? Well, if we ever get that big, um, at this point we have 150 blueberries. I've got 12 quarts that we've picked. That's the, that's the season. I mean, we're talking three years up the road, and, and we don't know. We don't know. I just think of people that come in with two little kids and they've got a flat of blueberries, you put them on a tractor, the tractor goes out to the parking lot. It's common practice any place I've ever picked them. And then you go pick, take them off the tractor, you weigh them and go back to your car. Especially because we, we only have foot traffic up to the blueberries. That's a pretty long walk up there. And that is all going to have to be by foot. So you'd have somebody carrying 10 pounds of blueberries, two little kids walking on a, you should come walk it. It's a gravel, there's roots, there's sticks, there's, it's a natural woods area. I mean, we, nobody knows. This isn't, this is, we've been paying taxes on 14 acres for a long, long time. We're trying to make the, the land support itself. Mm -hmm. And that's all of this is about. So, you know, I didn't think that one day, yeah, there's going to be that many blueberries. Right now, my three year old grandson can pick them in a cup. And so, that's just, that's where we are. But if everybody's going to walk in and out of there as we're agreeing, then I think that that might be a use. That, that is something that could happen. What you're talking about, a tractor trip or two tractor trips a day for three weeks. It's not. Your counsel wants to have say, say something. I think that what. You just go to the podium, please. It's Joanna Toronto for the Buffalo Spin. I think the conclusion that I came to after looking at all of these uses is that whether you break them down or you look at them in the aggregate, what you're talking about is the same vehicle going across a portion of existing, of existing access that's been there for 12 years. Um, most people would call that grandfathered and say it's an existing use. Um, if you're going over there for timber harvesting, it's allowed without a permit. If you're going over there for mowing, it's allowed without a permit. Uh, mowing existing lawns, it's allowed without a permit. If you're going over there for agricultural use, and it's an existing use, say it's the road that, or the access that it's an existing use, then it's allowed without a permit. All of these, if you look at the type of use and the level of controls that were put on it in order to protect the resource, there's a fair amount of symmetry in terms of what permitting is required, and that is that a permit is not required. Thank you. Any further comments? Oh, I, I should give you the opportunity if you want it. Any last comments? Have we beat the horse to death yet? I think we have. Okay, great. Other comments from the panel? Again, the, 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 um, I, I recognize that the impact uh, contemplated by a number of these other uses and activities that are permitted without any resource protection permit in many ways will be much more intensive than passing a tractor over uh, once or twice over a three um, a day over a three week period, the problem is that, from my perspective, we're bound by the ordinance, and we if, if we are to say that a sending the tractor over is permitted, we have to find in, uh, an anchor or something to hook that decision on in this ordinance. And I guess I'm struggling to find where that is, setting aside the the wisdom of what is permitted and what is not by the ordinance. Do you think the but not limited to terminology and for non-intensive recreational activity? Do you think it falls under there? Not the tractor. I would say that the pedestrian access does. So the, again, the pedestrian access, I don't, I, I see section eight is, or item number eight is uh, 
covering that, the question becomes motorized vehicle for um, whether it's uh, being used for agricultural purposes uh, for this particular portion of the pathway. It's basically just entrance and egress to the, the parcel. That requires a permit. And which requires a permit? Where it says permitted, those are ones don't require a permit. Um, the, use is exempted. Yeah. The, the one you can get, it seems to me the one place that you could argue is the grooming of existing residential lawns and landscapes, including the installation of fence and existing lawns. To the extent that he's going down that driveway to get to his lawns over there, you could argue. Is that a residential property there? Where you're cutting those lawns? I don't know where the zone is. But that's adjacent. Is that a residential lot there? No? Is there anything on that lot? No, no. I don't know. Is there a house on it? No, it's not a house on it. No house. You just cut it. You just cut it or make it look nice? Mm -hmm. Which is nice for the town. <laughs> <laughs> I personally think that that going down there to cut, cut those is comes under uh, the grooming of existing residential lawns and landscaping. Um, but I would tend to agree with you that, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be, without a permit, doesn't seem to be a, um, you know, a, a clear authority um, to go back and forth across that land to service as your back agriculture area. And it doesn't sound like you need it because you can go directly from your house back into the agricultural area. And as far as I can tell, I don't see a problem with going down the, using your tractor up there and going down that land over to the other area to trim those fields because it's trimming residential lots. So I think the long and short of it, the way I view it, is you can go down that line, that path to trim your lawns, but you can't go back and forth with truck to take your trucks to take your blueberries out without a permit. You can always go over and get a permit to do it. I would agree with that. Yep. I would agree with that. John? No, I, I agree. So, Bruce, can we conditionally approve, uh, can, can we, I think what we're saying in essence is we're denying the appeal, it, we're, we're granting the appeal only in, to the extent that it uh, objects to the um, accessing the back lot for the purposes of running vehicular traffic across that path for the purposes of taking blueberries in and out and or uh, machinery in and out, uh, but only to that extent that we're granting the appeal. The rest of it is denied, and uh, and the agricultural use is allowed, the foot traffic is allowed, and the, and the tractor traffic is allowed to the extent that it falls within grooming of existing residential lawns. Okay, uh, I think, uh, why don't we take a vote on that? Um, I make a mo I'll make a motion that um, the appellants um, appeal is granted only to the extent that it objects to the vehicular traffic um, going across the path um, to the back lot uh, for the purposes of agricultural purposes. Um, and it is denied with respect to its objection to the use, to the conducting of agricultural services, agricultural activities, and agricultural related activities on the back lot in the RA zone, and uh, it is denied with respect to its objection to foot traffic going across the path, and it is denied with respect to the objection to the tractor going across that um, footpath for the purposes of 
um, grooming of existing law, residential lawns and landscaping. Um, so moved. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Passes unanimously. I think that does it for that application. Thank you very much for all your patience. Did we, we, did we take an official vote on the, um, the portion of the appeal relating to the need for um, site review? Did we take an official vote? Yes, the, that, the, the request for a site review is denied. That, that was part of the motion, I believe. It wasn't clear enough to clarify it. Um, the appeal to the extent it's requesting that uh, site plan be required is denied. All in favor? Second. Passes unanimously. Did we need were these rules? Thank you. Have a good night. Were these rules and regs that What's were that? attached? <laughs> this is part of the package. I don't know if it was. Yeah, do we have anything we else on the agenda, Bruce? There was the um, existing rules regarding public participation of the zoning board. Possible review existing rules regarding public participation. Where is that? Hold on, I got to find my list here. Number F. List here. I think it evaporated in the heat. There we go. Why don't you explain F to us, Bruce? participation and everybody but the zoning board has has done that um, but but I think I found out well I found out since then that it isn't the rules per se that, we're, that, that we need to review we need to review for a work plan um, got to get some kind of work plan whereby um, we have something in place not only for training on a regular basis, but for, for uh, well, basically for training. I, I don't know what other work plan we could put in. I mean, I'm not being very clear here because I'm, I'm a little bit punchy right now, but the rules and regulations I included, in, but I think what, and I can't find, I think the rules to get this one, rules and regulations? Yeah. I think it gives the public participation. Um, I think the rules, the way it's set up, allows for public participation. So I don't think we really have to go anywhere with that. But if you if you if you if you think there's something that we need to add based on I did I, I included this this public participation that the council did right? In your are these the existing rules or are these new proposed rules? These are the existing rules. Yeah. But I also include uh, included a copy of what what uh, the council did to see if there's anything else that wanted to be added there. But I don't think that's so much the issue as is coming up with with a work plan, basically describe you know how we're gonna how we're gonna train if if we're gonna have a SUT meeting. In for training, right to just tra train. Do we have training when somebody else comes on new? Um, it, it, oh, we used to have once a year training session. Right. We haven't been doing that over yeah. the last couple of years. <laughs> at least at a minimum. Yeah. So what happened to that? <laughs> Nothing really. We have just been meeting so infrequently that it was kind of just kind of got down the wayside. Yeah. Um, the town doesn't want to spend the money on. I it guess. On, uh, I guess what I'd like to do. The council come to Cape Elizabeth. I think we could all meet down at the park. Right. I guess I found the right rules and regulations. I, I guess maybe to, to, to make, maybe to make this shot sweet is 
everybody is familiar, well, maybe the new people aren't, with what we have for rules and regulations, and if you believe that that takes care of that portion, then, then we can move on. If well, what I would suggest is we table this till the next meeting and give everybody, we have a very limited form. Do you want me to work or, or do a work plan? Yeah. Uh, and then present it for review next time? Yeah. yeah. Maybe if you'd send it out to everybody and just ask them both to review this. You know, it's hard to get people's attention these days. The Internet's dominating. I can do that. And They're all busy on Facebook. You know? We might want and, to call uh, a meeting initially to, to, to go over that and, and get some training with the town attorney for the new. Yeah, I think it would be good for the Although new. I think you guys got a pretty darn good handle on it. I don't know that you need that much. Yeah, nice job, guys, for the first yeah. uh, at that. Very nice. Better than we did. Uh, it was good. I thought we parsed that out as, about as thinly as you could possibly get to and ended up with a probably where they both walked out of here and shook hands, so and we shot each other on the way out. So we we uh, shouldn't be discussing that in a public forum, uh, or we should be discussing it now that the, everybody's left. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll, get, I'll get a work plan kind of formalized, and we'll review that next time. Okay. Um, maybe we should call a meeting next month just for those. How about September? September? December? September. September, yeah, because I can say I'm on vacation August, next August, time. nobody's going to be around. S September, okay. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll do a meeting whether we have an agenda or not. Yeah, exactly. September, September to go over that, those yeah. issues, and, and I'll get some training in. Do you want to start, if there's no regular agenda, do you want to start a little earlier, like at 6? Or, or, I mean, if there is a if there is a agenda on... Leave it at 7. Leave it at 7. People, I think used people are used to getting here at 7. Well, hopefully it wouldn't be something that's going to be as complicated as this issue. Yeah, I mean, if, if we don't have any appeals on, we could just have the training and go over this as well. Okay. All right. So Good meeting. That's all I have. Great. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Meetings adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen.